Hey, happy Friday. This week I went hands-on with Samsung's brand new foldable smartphones and I have lots of thoughts on them. Xiaomi finally joined the Android tablet club in a serious way and Facebook's acquisition of Giphy might not go through after all. Our tech knowledge quiz this week is all about tech trivia that you'll either know or you'll learn something new with each question. Check it out, links are in the description and welcome to the Friday checkout. Okay, my release highlights this week start with the Honor Magic 3, 3 Pro and 3 Pro Plus, which the internet has decided is the company's first real self-developed flagship phone series since they split from Huawei, but I actually suspect could just be Huawei passing on the Mate 50 designs to the company as their P-series launch was delayed so much that they probably won't be able to bring out another flagship this year. The two regular Magic 3 phones look very much like regular Mate phones and the Pro Plus totally looks like a Porsche edition Mate phone plus a lot of tech underneath is super similar as well. After that, we have the Galaxy Watch 4 and 4 Classic, Samsung's first ever Wear OS watches that also come with many new biometric sensors and a brand new 5 nanometer Exynos processor. Fun fact, the official Samsung page says the chip has 10 times better GPU performance than its predecessor, while the official announcement video said 10% better, which is a pretty big difference. So I asked a Samsung product manager and he said, sorry, he doesn't know which one is correct. Okay. And my final highlight are the $150 Galaxy Buds 2, where the main highlight is really that they are absolutely tiny, like impressively so. There were a ton of really good announcements this week, so check out the release monitor in the Crowd app for a full list and the prices and everything, and upload your favorites so they rise to the top. Links in the description. Okay, and my first story of the week will be about Samsung's two new foldable smartphones. I actually went to the Samsung event this year and I played with both of these devices extensively, and while I have to admit I am a foldable fanboy, I also think that Samsung is on a really big roll here. Now on the surface, the upgrades over last year's foldables seem kind of minor, and it's shocking just how similar both of these are to their predecessors in terms of form factor. They feel basically identical in the hand except for a few corner radiuses that have been changed, a camera that sticks out a little less on the back, a crease that feels slightly less pronounced, and a few shaved off grams here and there. Now as an owner of a very chunky fold too, I welcome any reduction in weight and thickness, but compared to the massive leap that was the first generation to the second generation, this year's upgrades certainly seem minor on the surface. There are a few more things happening beyond that, like using 120Hz screens pretty much everywhere, or a larger outer display on the flip that you can actually read notifications on or dictate a voice memo on, and yes of course also the under display camera, which is uh, fine, I mean it's slightly less annoying than a hole punch and takes slightly worse photos, so whatever. But all of these upgrades just feel like the regular year to year spec bumps that we've come to expect from smartphones, not the quantum leap of the last generation. Instead I talked to Samsung. PR people and product managers and they told me that they did a lot of consumer research and again and again they heard that there are two main things keeping regular people from switching to foldables. First, the price and second, the durability. And so th this generation, they focused almost entirely on those two. In terms of pricing, the flip finally comes in at under a thousand bucks, bringing foldables completely in line with regular high-end flagships for the first time ever. And while the fold is only 200 euros less than its predecessor, they also often give insane trade-in offers, like offering 950 euros for the Fold 2 that I bought in Germany nine months ago for 1,100 euros. That's an amazing trade-in offer. Now, these are still expensive phones, but in a couple of months with discounts and carrier promotions, most people will be able to pick these up for like 600 or a thousand bucks or something, and that's a huge deal. Likewise, in terms of durability, well, I've used my Fold 2 extensively for nine months and I've dropped it completely into a shower. I've kicked it out of my pocket while I was riding a bike and it fell on the concrete for like three meters and stuff and it survived all of that without a problem. So I'm not too worried myself, but I can certainly understand why other people's would be. And Samsung has made significant improvements in this area as well. I've linked to a whole in-depth article from The Verge that goes over all of the durability upgrades in detail, but there's finally proper water resistance at IPX8 to be exact, which just by itself is incredibly impressive for a foldable. The frame now uses a more robust aluminum, the outside screen is Gorilla Glass Victus, the screen protector inside is supposedly 80% less scratch resistant and should feel better to use under your finger, so you're less likely to actually want to peel it off, and it's tough enough to let you use an S Pen 
on a foldable for the first time ever. Plus, Samsung is also giving one year of Samsung Care Plus for free with these that includes coverage for broken screens and water damage, etc. About a month ago, I made a poll on Twitter, where you should definitely follow me if you haven't yet, it's at TechAltar, and I asked people what would be the main thing Samsung could do to actually convince them to upgrade to a foldable. And almost everybody, I think over 80% of people actually said either price or durability. So in my very unscientific way of evaluating this, I actually think Samsung is doing the right thing here. Now I am planning to review either the flip or the fold and maybe even both on my main tech altar channel. So let me know which one you're more interested in down in the comments. Okay, and my second story of the week will be Xiaomi's big announcements. And while I think the Mi Mix 4 got the most attention due to having an under display camera that looks quite frankly incredible, the products that I was most interested in were actually their new tablets, the Mi Pad 5 and the Mi Pad 5 Pro. So these are China only for now, but expected to go international too at some point, and they are very much iPad Pro type tablets, complete with stylus support, folding keyboard cases, etc. And these look like fine tablets for the price especially, with flagship specs and the Pro starting under 400 bucks for example, but what's really exciting to me is the fact that after years of neglect, Android tablets as a category are finally seeing a much needed boost. These aren't Xiaomi's first tablets of course, but they are their first ones that feel seriously competitive. Samsung, of course, has really leaned into tablets in the last year or two, Huawei is going all in on their MatePad series as well, and even OnePlus is rumored to bring their first Android tablet out soon too. So now all the big Android names are bringing serious offerings to the market. Tablet sales went through the roof during the pandemic, jumping 53% year over year last quarter as students are switching to digital learning solutions, and as these keyboard equipped models have made them useful for more than just watching videos and browsing the web, and as tablets have become productivity machines, the Android manufacturers can finally try to sell more expensive models, not just the entry-level crap that used to make up most of their sales. Apple is still the market leader and has actually widened their lead, but Android tablet sales still account for about two-thirds of the market and are growing fast too, meaning that there might finally be enough volume behind this category for app makers to take it a little bit more seriously as well. As a bonus point, Samsung's Fold 3 introduced tablet mode and portrait oriented orientation, so instead of these ridiculously stretched out phone apps that we have on the Fold 2, we will soon get more information on screen with select apps like YouTube or Gmail or Spotify, which should be yet another very lucrative customer group to target, even if it is a small one for now. Better tablet app support is literally the number one feature request that I would have as a Fold 2 owner, so I'm really excited where this and Android tablets in general are going. Okay, and my last story of the week will be a quick one, and it is Facebook's acquisition of Giphy getting challenged by regulators in the UK. Now, I made a dedicated video when this acquisition was announced on how it would let Facebook track users and place ads even in competing social media platforms, which is just crazy. So if you haven't yet, maybe watch that. Every major app from TikTok to Signal and even keyboards use Giphy to show GIFs, at least in part, and selling such a backdoor to Facebook into all of these apps is pretty dangerous, of course, and so while this decision isn't final yet, I really hope that regulators actually go through with it. Okay, that's it for the news, and if you haven't joined Crowd yet, and if you love gadgets, do check it out. It's a real gadget community that I'm building with my team, where you can review the products that you own and find reliable reviews from others. You can start a poll and get answers from real owners almost instantly. In the case of popular products, it's typically multiple answers in under a minute. We of course now have the release monitor, so you can actually see new products that are being announced to help you stay up to date with the world of technology. There's a weekly tech knowledge quiz that you can take for fun, and basically everyone who's on crowd with an account had to pass that quiz to make sure that all of our users are knowledgeable and won't give nonsensical answers or reviews or anything. Links are in the description, and also if you're an old-time crowd user, be sure to check if you have reviewed all of your products lately, and review them if you haven't. All right, I'll see you next Friday.